Hi, my name is Goose, and this is the story about how I went from being a broke, alcoholic, drug addict, living on my office floor, to making over $20 million on the internet in under four years. I grew up in a tiny country town in regional Australia called Glengarry, and I've since founded a company that's doing over eight figures in revenue, and has been widely recognized as one of the fastest growing companies in Australia. Not only that, I currently live in Bali, I have an amazing relationship with my partner, I have a multi seven figure investment portfolio, and I'm living the life that I always wanted to live. But it hasn't always been this way. In fact, I've had a lot of challenges along the way, and in this video, I'm going to share the entire story, including a lot of those challenges and even a lot of stuff that I've never shared before. And I'm making this video not because I want to brag. In fact, the reason I'm making this video is because I want to show you that no matter what your situation is, where you come from, what your background is, that you too can create the life that you want. So as I mentioned, I grew up in a tiny little country town called Glengarry. Now, this is the kind of town where you needed to be a third generation local and play football and cricket for the local team to be considered local. And I was none of those. So I never really quite fit in. And in fact, I was always a bit of a troublemaker. When I was 14, I was out dirt bike riding with one of my friends and I crashed and broke my back. We were miles from anywhere. In fact, I had to be airlifted hundreds of kilometers from where we were out in the bush to Melbourne to go to emergency and to get treated. I was in hospital for, for quite a while. And but when I got out of hospital and I was at home, I was still spent you know, weeks and months, I think, in bed, unable to really do anything. Now, prior to breaking my back, I had aspirations of, you know, when I grew up, I was gonna become a soccer player or something like that. But breaking my back and being stuck in bed for, for such a long period of time with no one around me and nothing to do, I also suddenly realized that I, that future probably wasn't gonna be for me anymore. The only thing I really had to keep me company during that time was music. Now, I love music. That was my passion. And I was listening to all these CDs that I had back when CDs were still the thing. And I remember listening to a couple of live albums that I had of um, bands that I liked that were playing at festivals. Now, I was a young kid from the countryside. I'd never been to a festival. I didn't really know what one was. But at that point, I decided that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to organize festivals. Once I could actually start walking again and once I could start you know, getting out and about, I started mowing lawns and doing odd jobs until I could raise enough money to go and hire a hall, like a little town hall in the, in the, in the town nearby. I, I hired the hall, I organized a gig, I got bands to play and I started running these shows. And that was at the age of 14. And it really excited me because I just wanted to make an impact. I just wanted to see people be happy. I wanted to be able to bring joy into people's lives. I wanted to be able to create those moments. By the time I was 17, I was so engrossed in this whole experience, creating shows, running shows, working on events all over the place, um, that I decided that I was gonna to commit to doing it full time. And in fact, at 17, I dropped out of high school, which was a pretty big thing to do, to leave all of my friends, my social circle, all of that kind of stuff behind and carve out on a new path. Now, the path that I set myself out on was to organize a music festival, my very own one, four or five bands or something. But this time I wanted to do something bigger. One of my teachers actually said on, on my way out, she said, whatever you do, keep setting your alarm every day, because if you don't, you'll get sloppy. And I took that on board. But in order to fund the festival, I didn't have enough money. You know, I was a 17 year old kid. And so I actually went to my parents with a business plan. Now, my parents never had a lot of money. And at the time they extended their mortgage to lend me, I think it was $10,000, which was a big sum of money back in those days. And particularly for my family and particularly for me at 17 years old. And we started organizing the festival. Now, I didn't believe in contracts. So I had all these really great artists booked to play at the festival, but the festival was also taking place around New Year's Eve. So I'd booked all these great artists, except I hadn't locked them in with a contract. And then they all got offered bigger and better festivals, major festivals that were gonna be far more important to their career than working at our little festival out in the countryside so unfortunately all of our headline acts pulled out and I remember thinking oh my god what have I done I've lost everything and I remember my dad at the end of the day uh, he came to the festival to help pack up and I remember him driving up to me and I was crestfallen and he said to me hey how'd it go and I said dad I think we lost I said dad I think we lost a bunch of money I said, I think, I'll, I think we lost a bunch of money. And he said, well, how much? I said, I think it was about $12,000, which was more than all the money they'd lent me. And I was thinking, how is he gonna respond? And he turned to me and he, he looked at me and he said, well, you win some and you lose some and you learn. I've never gotten this emotional down this story. And that was one of the most important things that ever happened to me because it showed that they really believed in me. And so I moved to Melbourne to start a new life and to start exploring and expanding my career. And those next few years were crazy. I mean, 18 years old, moved to the city, started trying to make a name for myself, started running club night, started going out too hard and too often, started partying really, really hard. I was really pushing the boundaries. In fact, when I was 
about 18, 19 years old, I actually made a choice that I said I wanted to know what it's like to go to the extreme of all of this kind of stuff because I looked at people who had kind of were at the bottom of the barrel, so to, so to speak, and I wanted to know what it was like to get there. Really going deep into drug use and drug abuse. From 20 to 25, it was crazy. I worked in Ethiopia as a permaculture trainer, teaching people how to teach permaculture. I moved to Vietnam, lived in Vietnam, and worked as an adventure motorcycle tour guide. All in all, those five years were just wild and I was really trying to understand who I was and I was trying to really dig deep and I guess try and experience things on a deeper, deeper level. But unfortunately, one night on my way home, I got hit by a bus and I uh, severely damaged my foot in the accident. And so I made the decision to leave Vietnam to come home to recover, move back to my parents' house. As I started to get back on my feet, so to speak, I started to think about, okay, what am I gonna do next? And I'd had a little bit of a break uh, from festivals and I decided, hmm, you know what? I actually had a lot of skills in that area. So why don't I re-explore that? You know, there's a good opportunity for me to make some money, get a job, you know, start to build a life for myself and let's lean into that. I spent a lot of time developing those skills. Let's not throw them all in the bin. So I started doing that. I started getting back into working at festivals and I had really natural skills and aptitudes for it. I was able to manage large complex projects. I was able to lead people. I was able to, you know, I had an extremely high work ethic, you know, working 18 hour days, sometimes even 24 hour days. I was fine with all of it because I, I loved it and, and that was part of my natural drive. We managed festivals all over the world together we built a team we did all of this kind of stuff we were operating in three continents and some of the festivals just to give a bit of context that we were working on were place at things like burning man things like glastonbury festival in the uk boomtown fair we even did an event for the malaysian government for a million people now we called it a business but the reality is we had no idea how to run a business. In fact, we didn't even know what a PL was. During this time as well, I started to kind of forget who I was. I started to lose my own identity. I started drinking again and, you know, I started taking drugs again and started to rely on how other people thought that I should be. I also uh, met a woman during that time and we got married. Now, looking back over that period of time i it's a very weird and strange and confused part of my life where i ended up in a lot of places that i realized i was wildly unhappy and i didn't really know how i'd gotten there i also realized that i was doing work that i actually didn't really love the only way that i dealt with that was continuing to drink more which obviously didn't really help my depression in 2018 i started to realize something was something was wrong i ended up leaving my wife and had nowhere to live except for our little office in footscray i picked one of the rooms put a mattress on the floor and lived there because I literally had nowhere else to go. At the same time, we decided to start a festival, believe it or not. <laughs> and so we also wanted to grow a bit of a team to do that. So my business partner decided to hire a an intern or an, an assistant, which I didn't know anything about and I didn't really care anything about. One day, this amazing and beautiful woman walked into the office and her name was Gabby and I was instantly struck. As soon as she walked in, I was like, holy smokes, I think this is the one. We kept our professional distance for a few months and we tried to kind of keep make that work. But it, after a few months, it was obvious that we both felt the same way about each other. And we fell deeply, deeply in love. Now, you gotta remember at that time, I was an alcoholic drug addict living in my office floor that had no money. I actually asked her one day, I was like, what on earth do you see in me? And she said something like, you smell great, which I'm not sure was true. I was living on the, on the floor of my office, but I am grateful that she saw something because Without her, I wouldn't be here today. And she's not only my amazing partner right now, but she's also my business partner. So we're partners in both business and life. And I've got to say, it is one of the best things ever. Now, the festival that we ran that year actually lost a whole bunch of money and it was terrifying. But we decided to push on. We decided to try and learn from those mistakes and run that festival again the next year. And guess what happened then? it failed again. We lost a whole bunch more money. So by March, 2018, things for me had gotten out of control. And I remember waking up one day, you know, drinking a whole ton of, of alcohol and and doing about a gram of cocaine and amongst other things just to get the day started. And I remember thinking to myself, this is not going good. I'm either gonna lose Gabby or I'm gonna die or both. So I decided that I was gonna to have to fix myself. So after I got back from that festival, I 
had a, a deep and meaningful conversation with Gabby and I told her I was going to change for good and for real. And on the 1st of April 2018, I got sober. I just quit everything. Cold turkey. I quit the cigarettes. I quit the drugs. I quit the alcohol. I even quit carbs and sugar, went full keto. And by May 2018, it was like a veil had been lifted from my face where I started to really look into my life and go, well, where are we going? I'm going nowhere. Like, look at this. Like, I, what is the body that I've become? What is the mind that I've become? And what is the life that we're creating? And so we started to think, well, how are we going to get out of this? I hated the work that I was doing and we had nothing to show for it. And so we thought to ourselves, well, you know what? We've seen a lot of people making money in real estate. Let's give that a go because we just thought that all you needed to do was buy a property and it would double every seven years. In fact, I remember speaking to someone at the time, hey, so do you know how real estate works? He said, yeah, I'm pretty sure it just doubles every seven years. I'm like, so you just buy anything and it doubles every seven years. And he said, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. I said, oh. That sounds pretty easy. I'm pretty sure I can do that. Gabby and I decided that we were going to invest in real estate and we were going to use that to create financial freedom. Now, we didn't know how that would work. And there was a few uh, open homes, suites nearby, some display suites for new new developments that were happening in the area in Footscray. We just walked in there randomly one Sunday afternoon and walked out with some signed contracts to purchase an off-the-plan apartment in Footscray early in 2018, right before the market started to crash. Now, what was pretty interesting about that is that we had to go back a couple of days later to finish signing some documents. We were trying to frantically sign the final contracts because we were trying to go to a property investment education seminar. We signed them as quickly as we could and we raced out of there and we got in the car and this was our first property purchase. We celebrated with a uh, halal snack pack that we shared in the car on the way. (laughs) Anyone who's been to seminars knows that sometimes they can be a strong sales pitch. Nonetheless, there's usually some information in there. Now, the information that we got out of this session was eye-opening. For the very first time, we were hearing things like positive cash flow and how to, you know, yields and like all these things that we'd never really looked into before. And I remember looking at Gabby and she looked at me and we were like, we have just made a massive, massive mistake. This was a massive catalyst for us though, because that actually caused us to start going, well, hang on a second. Why do some properties go up? Why do some properties go down? That catalyst combined with the clarity that we had and that I developed after giving up all the drugs and alcohol allowed us to start going, well, how does this thing work? And really start getting deep into it and start to dissect it. And in fact, I became obsessed. So the my kind of addictive personality, I just threw that towards trying to solve this problem. I was like, well, how could we know? How could we find the right property in the right place at the right time? Over the course of the rest of that year, we did every course and every seminar and read every book that we possibly could. We poured all of our money into all of this. We were just full on obsessed. We actually had maps and stuff all over our walls and we're mapping things out and it looked like you know some kind of CIA special ops type thing with all this kind of stuff stuck all over the walls. Either that or we looked a little bit insane. Now, it wasn't all smooth sailing from there though. I was sober for a few months and I started thinking, hey, I've got a handle on this. I know what I'm doing. I've been sober for a few months now. I've got this. I don't have a problem anymore. I, I quit. I'm good. With that in mind, I was at a, uh, a function one time and I got offered a glass of wine and then it's like a switch went off in my mind and I got out of control and I ended up on a two week bender. And that proved to me that I actually wasn't in control. And I started to realize that actually maybe there's something here that is is potentially a real danger to me and maybe something I really need to consider that I might not ever be able to drink again. We decided, okay, this is our make or break moment. Let's apply all of the learnings that we developed through all of this you know, self-education and exploration and trying to build out these investment hypotheses. Let's try and apply this and buy a property because we said we can find somewhere to rent or we can try and find somewhere that we can buy. So we did. We went and bought a property in regional Victoria that I like to affectionately call the crack den. That property has actually turned out to be a real winner. It was proof that we actually knew how to find the right property in the right place at the right time. Now, through this process and through uh, through Gabby and I learning how to you know try and find properties and we realized that there's probably a lot of other people out there who are going to make a similar mistake to what we made and we thought wow we realized we'd actually found a method that could work and could help people and if nothing else we could help people avoid making the same mistake that we had made on the 1st of April 2019 Gabby and I started Dashdot when we started the business we had five thousand dollars to our name that's it no safety net no backup no nothing We never worked in the real estate industry before. We had no contacts. We didn't know any investors. We had no networks. We had nothing. We had a mortgage to pay because we just moved into the crack den. We were working 18 hour days, seven days a week, trying to get some kind of traction. And in fact, 
we were so broke in the first kind of few months of starting the business that we literally would walk around the supermarket eating food off the shelves so that we could save money to spend on ads and trying to grow the company. At the time, a lot of a lot of what was driving us was fear. And so we burnt the boats, we went all in and we just got obsessed with trying to make this work. And then people started giving us money. <laughs> we were like, holy shit. This is intense because our genuine desire was not to make money. It wasn't like, yay, people are giving us money, yahoo. It was, holy smokes, this is, this is real. We also got pretty good at marketing and sales. And so we went from basically no revenue, no traction to very quickly accelerating to I think about $180,000 a month in the space of a couple of months. So basically from zero to 180 grand in I think it was like three months. Now, one of the things that really changed for me around that time was one of my mentors actually said to me, he said, Goose, it's all good that you're making all this money, but you don't even know how to run a business. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, holy smokes, he's right. <laughs> I then said, okay, that's cool that I've learned how to do sales and marketing. Now I actually need to learn the sport of business. How do I do that? And I read a really powerful book at the time and it's good to great by Jim Collins. And it transformed the way that I thought about business and the timelines. Because we'd only been thinking like one year ahead or two years ahead, like what's our revenue target gonna be? And we started thinking about what does this business mean? And who are we? And what's our identity? And who do we wanna become? And how do we build an iconic business that lasts? And so a combination of those two things led us to really go, okay, we need to really rebuild this in a way that's gonna make it make a powerful, strong, highly impactful business that's gonna change the world, which is ultimately what it's always been about for us. But then COVID hit. So March 2020, COVID hit and we had a 97% loss of revenue pretty much overnight. I was walking around Bondi Beach. It was gray. It was dreary. It was clouds everywhere. It was cold. I was miserable. And I just kept thinking, there's no way out. There's no way out. And I'm going to quit. And I remember talking to my brother at the time. And I just remember him telling me don't quit <laughs> he's like you've built something amazing that's really helping people and he told me that he believed in me so we couldn't stop we had to keep going without that support and without that belief my life would be a very different story right now we had an opportunity to actually create something that had never been created before you see, up to that point, because we were so committed to making sure that we never made a mistake with any of our clients, we had developed really good systems and processes and theories and ideas and stuff around solving that specific issue. How do we find the right property in the right place at the right time? But we knew we needed to take it to the next level. We decided to start really systemizing and building, starting to try and work out how to turn that into a technology driven approach. So at the start of 2021, we went all in. We started to get momentum. We started to build a team. We started to invest in technology. We started throwing everything. As we started to grow, we just kept pushing all of our chips back into the center of the table. We never really took any money off the table. You see a lot of people in business who get successful and you've probably seen a lot of them on YouTube and on the internet. They're buying nice cars and they're doing all this kind of stuff and they're doing all these kind of fancy things. We didn't do any of that. Mine and Gabby's lifestyle didn't change at all. When we went from a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year to millions of dollars a year, nothing meaningful about our lifestyle had changed. In fact, it has, has hardly changed even today. 2021 was a fantastic year in real estate and we grew massively. We almost 10 x in 12 months over that period of time. Late in 2022, we ended up hitting our first $1 million month. And then just a few months ago in 2023, we actually hit our first $1.5 million month. So things are definitely moving in the right direction. So as you can see, it hasn't always been smooth sailing. In fact, there's been a lot of challenges along the way. We now live in Bali, we're traveling the world, living the life that we always dreamed of. But the most important thing is the impact that we've created. Yes, wealth is important, but the thing that drives us and the thing that I'm most proud of is not the financial success of the business, it's in fact the impact that we've created. The impact on our team and the impact on our clients. We've helped over a thousand people to build wealth and to transform their lives, which is phenomenal. That's something that inspires me every single day. We also were rec recently recognized as one of the best places to work in Australia, which means that we're making a real impact on the lives of our team. So if you wanna know how after all that, we've been able to build one of the fastest growing companies in the country and have a massive impact on the world, then hit subscribe because that's what this channel is all about. This is just the beginning of my journey on YouTube and I have so much more that I wanna share with you. In fact, my mission, my purpose, the whole reason I am doing this is not because I have a course to sell. It's not because I'm trying to get you to buy anything. It's in fact, I wanna help you transform your life and live the life of your dreams. I want you to know that it's possible and I wanna show you how.
So go on, dream bigger.